So I had an interesting experience ooh, a few weeks ago. Um, I'm a speaker. I speak in schools. And uh, last month, I got a chance to speak in a middle school. And it's not often. I'm typically working on college campuses. But I got this chance to, to speak in a middle school. And it was in Hardwick. And uh, I had to leave really early. It's like an almost two-hour drive from Burlington. And uh, not quite, hour and a half. I might have been going slow. And I started really early, so it was dark out. And I'm driving to the school, and I do this little thing. I'm just going to be really honest with you. I call it the pen trick. What you do is you take a pen, and you put it in your mouth, put it all the way back in there, and it simulates a smile. And it confuses your brain. It gives your brain this confidence. It gives you this sense of, like, calmness and everything's going to be okay. I mean, years into being a speaker, I still struggle at times, like anybody, with, you know, I hope this goes well and I hope this is useful for the students. So I was doing the pen trick, as I've done many times before, and it was so dark and I was on the highway, and I had this pen in my mouth, and then I tasted, like, this metal. And uh, uh, it was not metal. It was... Uh, deep blue ink. <laughs> and the way that I know that is because I could feel it on my hand and I turned on the, I could just see in the, in the tiny shred of sunlight, I could see blue ink on my hand. And that was bad because it would not come out, right? But I was like, what's worse is it's on my face. <laughs> and I, I, I don't know how bad it is, right? And I'm on the highway, I'm doing, you know, uh, uh, high enough speed. I mean, I can't pull off. So I had this idea, I'm gonna, um, I'm gonna swish some water in my mouth to at least like <laughs> dilute the, the ink. <laughs> so I, fill, I get a mouthful of water and, it's, and, um, and now I'm like, well cool, I'm doing 75, I can't spit it out of the window. So I'm effectively marinating my teeth in blue ink water. And I'm like seven miles from an exit. So I just held it in my mouth for seven miles. I got off the exit and um, I went to the, that uh, rest stop in Waterbury and I just like walked in. I just tried not to make eye contact you know, with people. I was like, this is so bad. It's like I have ink all over my face. And, uh, and I, spent some, uh, I spent some time <laughs> with like the, the harshest hand soap you can imagine. Not hand soap, just like industrial grade comet, you know, just on my face. And uh, it was just, it was just ironic to me, I think, like going to a middle school as an adult <laughs> with a job, like I was invited there, I was going to be the speaker, people were going to clap for me. And I was like, this is as bad as it was to be in middle school. <laughs> it's nice to reconnect to that sometimes. I share that story with you also because I think it illustrates one of the uh, recurring challenges I've had in my work, which is there's something about being a speaker or being on stage where you feel like you're supposed to be perfect. And even though you know you're not, you can't be, you get caught in this trap all the time and you, and you feel like you have to hide your flaws and hide your weaknesses. And it's one of the hardest things about my job is that I feel so flawed and so clueless so much of the time, and yet I have to get up there and try to offer some truth. And I, I just feel like, what a visual, you know? Like, if you could see me b before I got on stage, covered in ink, in a rest stop bathroom, just dreading <laughs> what's about to happen. And so the, the second chance that I've been discovering recently is those moments when I'm invited out of the focus on me and into the focus onto the students that I work with. Sometimes when I travel to speak in schools, it's actually pretty isolating. I spend a lot of time in airplanes and in hotels and rental cars to get to some place in America where I'm going to talk for an hour and then I'm gone. And I have this, I made this GIF once. I, I, I spoke to an audience of 3,500 college students and this GIF was an answer to the question, what does 3,500 college students look like three minutes after the speech is over? It's just this huge empty room. Like, it's almost like you imagined it. Sometimes when I'm giving a speech and it's going well, I think, I wish I could just, like, extend this a little bit longer before they all leave. So a few weeks ago, I'm at UMass, and I'm speaking to a group of students, and after the speech was over, they had some announcements, so I went and I sat with a group of students while they did announcements, and then the organizer dismissed everyone, and they all got up and they left, except for the students at my table. 
Instead, they introduced themselves to me. Uh, there was Andy from Seoul, and there was Ely from South Carolina. There was Andre, and there was this uh, girl, Serbi, from New Delhi. And they started telling me their stories, what they were hoping to do in their life. And I just felt so connected and part of that moment. It was as good or better than anything I had been able to say in the hour previous. And that to me has become like my new truth. I feel like I've been reconnected with is this idea that I may go somewhere and talk for a long time and the best thing that's gonna be said is gonna happen after the speech is over and it won't be said by me. And so I feel like the second chance that I'm often given and often welcomed into is this idea to remember that it's not about me. I'm not the center of my universe. The center of my universe are the people around me and their stories and where they're headed, and I'm just lucky that I get to be a part of it, even when it includes uh, rest stops on the side of Waterbury <laughs> and scary drives in the dark. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you.